Line it up. Line it up. Come on, let's go. Okay, let's take this exercise one more time and keep the tempo up. Okay, good rehearsal. Let's go out and play a good show now. They came from all over the Midwest, drawn to Whitewater, Wisconsin for the confrontation of the summer, the dramatic meeting of some of the best drum and bugle corps in the world. Despite threatening skies, hundreds streamed into Warhawk Stadium on the University of Wisconsin, Whitewater campus. They all had their favorites, units dear to the hearts of drum and bugle corps nuts from Illinois, Ohio, Wisconsin, Michigan, Iowa, all over the Midwest. Allegiances were worn on sleeves, on backs, anywhere. And the dark day was forgotten as the thrilling sights and sounds of preliminary competition overwhelmed all. Final order of appearance in the evening championship competition was determined in the afternoon. And there was no holding back, especially for the fans, who found every move and flash of horn and drum electric with emotion. The rain still threatens, but does not deter thousands as they stream into the evening championship. Tension is in the air. The stage is set for what is to be a struggle between outstanding musical and marching machines of exceptional ability and talent. It is time to find out who is best in the Midwest. Good evening. I'm Pete Funny, and we're standing virtually on the edge of the field of battle for DCI Midwest championship drum, show, drum corps competition. This evening we're going to see literally hundreds of young men and women competing in drum corps competition and with us is Professor Mike Lacrone, who is director of bands for the University of Wisconsin. He's going to be commenting on some of the intricacies of drum corps competition. Mike, you're back with us again. Welcome back. Well, thank you. This is a great pleasure for me. It's a, this is a great kick. It's one of probably the finest contests of its kind anywhere in the country and, and I'm always very pleased to be here. I'm really a a band person, you know, you might say, but I'm really quite intrigued with what happens out here on the, the uh, drum corps competition. I'm a great follower, and I can't think that the, anybody can't help but appreciate what goes on out here on the field. Great talent and a lot of work. There sure is. I don't think anyone who uh, is exposed to this ever walks away uh, the same as when he uh, walked onto the field. We're going to have ten cores in competition. We're going to see highlights of uh, eight of them. We're going to look at the entire show of two of them. And we're going to ask you to comment now for us briefly on some of these cores and the uh, really the beautiful job they do. Be happy to. Guardsmen had the privilege of leading off tonight's competition, and they're the envy of the 13 other corps that they were able to eliminate from the finals. It's another fine corps from the Chicagoland area. They're very young, but they're gaining more and more respect in the drum corps world. Let's listen to some of their performance. This is the Pioneers from Milwaukee. They're performing Temptation, a song that was first introduced on the marching field by the University of Michigan band. This is another excellent Wisconsin core with a swing style that always has great audience appeal. Rains really came down in the middle of the Capitol Freelancers presentation, and you can see the water bouncing off the drum heads and the bugles. 
But in the tradition of drum corps everywhere, the show went on and the damp but enthusiastic crowd loved every moment of the rendition of Bully. didn't last very long, and by the time the Phantom Regiment had made their appearance, it had almost completely stopped. This is a group that is sure to be one of the powers of drum corps, and they made a very dramatic flag presentation by combining the music of Wagner with some extremely spectacular color guard work. Cavaliers have the reputation of being the winningest group in all of drum corps history. They have 11 national titles to their credit. The Green Machine has always had an excellent drum line that features a flawless stick technique. Let's hear how the total percussion section has become such a vital part of the drum corps sound of today. Seen Kilts are a perennial powerhouse in national competition, and Eric Whitmore, their drum major, has become a crowd favorite wherever the corps is performing. Here he shows off some of his conducting technique with a bit of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Very few musical selections this season have been able to generate the audience excitement that Kilts achieve with their flag work, soloists, and just sheer musical drive of their classy roll over Beethoven. Let's hear the rest of it.
Drum Corps competitions are won or lost by the execution of the individual members, and the Lacrosse Blue Stars have developed a smooth, air-free style that makes them contenders in every contest they enter. Here they move into a finale formation that makes an impressive climax to their show. Blue Devils are another California Corps that have come virtually out of nowhere to challenge the best in the nation. The trademarks of all the Blue Devil productions are the excellent jazz phrasings of all the players, the fine blend of the horn line, and their spectacular coverage of the field with rifles, flags, and just superb musicianship. watch a bit more of the Blue Devils to illustrate how drill designers are using the space and the musicians for much more highly refined movements. This is one area where drum corps most differs from the marching band. Uh, in fact, it's become more like a choreography. And you'll notice the special movements all fit the big band sound of this very fine corps. Okay, Mike, any overall comments on the cores we've seen so far? Oh, that's just got to be the best competition I've seen at uh, this contest in a long time. It's just super. Okay, fine. You know, one of the things I've been interested in for a long time is just how much money it takes to put a core like the ones we're seeing tonight on the road and into this kind of a competition. Earlier today, we talked with Jerry Seawright, who's with the Blue Devils, and we asked him where the money comes from. Jerry, you transport over 100 people around the country in a tour that lasts for at least a month or maybe more. Where does the money come from to finance your organization? The parent organization primarily raises the money through uh, fundraising events, all the mm -hmm. way from uh, the usual fundraising events, uh, papers, collecting papers, aluminum and candy, and uh, the usual fundraising yeah. activities. And this goes on year-round? Yes, it has to. It has yeah. to. Yeah. How much money do you think, or you know, do you budget uh, in round figures for a year's uh, activities for your core? Well, we have a budget in excess of $100,000 this year. Mm. What does that Gross include? Budget, excuse me. Gross budget. Yes. It includes a lot of instruments, a lot of uh, costly instruments, and we have some of them laid out before us. Can you talk a little bit about this and uh, the cost of these instruments, maintenance, and so on? I'll be glad to. This particular instrument over here, a contrabass, the contrabass is around $1,000. Uh, we have six of these. Hold that up. Yeah. They're $1,000 a piece. We have six of those. Mm -hmm. uh, the triple drums, that, which is a fairly new drum in drum corps, runs about 400 and a quarter to 475. The temp, marching temp, runs about 180 to $210, depending upon the size. 
Mm -hmm. And the smaller instrument over here, the baritone, is about uh, $375 mm -hmm. a piece. And how about this little drum here? This one's 195 now. <laughs> and we, so we carry 22 of these. How about maintaining these? Is it, is it a costly item just to keep uh, these things working in correct order? A constant, constant repair and a constant yeah. head, replacement of heads. The wear and tear the bugle gets compared with a musical instrument, for instance, as a trumpet or a... Uh, a, a coronet. Uh, there's just no comparison. These mm -hmm. things get wear from the repeated re practice, practice, practice. Mm -hmm. I'm amazed that they hold up as well as they do under the circumstances. Mm -hmm. Well, the budget that is in excess of $100,000, you can't sell enough candy or enough popcorn or enough aluminum. You've got to look to other sources, don't you? How about prize money? Is that part of the, uh, the funding for a corps such as yours or any corps? Oh, yes. It's a large part of it. That's mm -hmm. what keeps these, uh, these corps going. Uh, the, the, the prize monies. Mm -hmm. The DCI does have some guaranteed money. Uh, is that uh, what helps to keep you going? Uh, it, you can't, you've got to win in order to, to go big with the prize money, don't you? That's correct. That's exactly right. And DCI's guarantees that they give us uh, it certainly helps us. We have to have it to move this many people across the country or into the neighboring town. We have to have that kind of money nowadays to move 130 people. So in other words, the, the kids that are in this car, they don't buy their instruments. They're, you provide the instruments for them. We provide everything, uniform, instruments, and maintenance. Okay, how about the buses now? Uh, you are a car, there are several cars, but you, not all of them can afford it. But you do have your own buses. Where does the money come for that? Well, we found that traveling across the country, which we've done now, this is our uh, third year back east, we found that by chartering, uh, the expense was so great, but we could take the same funds and buy buses with them. So we bought buses. We have an investment of some $35,000 in our buses, which uh, they're older buses, but still it's a lot of money, and the maintenance on them is unbelievable. Just trying to keep them running. I'm sure you, as executive director of uh, the Corps, the Blue Devils, uh, uh, has a lot, had a lot of support, a lot of people behind you who are working. Uh, how important is it that you have support groups, uh, parents, I presume, uh, other interested organizations and groups? It would be impossible be absolutely impossible to run this organization without the support and the help that I get from other people, their parents, and my backup staff, my uh, my assistant managers. Uh, the number is almost too many to elaborate on here. How about yourself? How much time would you estimate you put in in a year as executive director? I think that figure would be almost impossible to estimate. I think I don't. I uh, devote about as much time to this activity as I do my full-time job. I see. I, I believe that's. That's very conservative. And finally, I guess uh, we'd comment briefly on, on just the, the job of moving yourself and this core across the country and chatting earlier. You said you had trouble the other day remembering where you had just come from. Does that get to be a typical core problem uh, really? about this time of year, mid-August or That's early true. August? Thank you, Jerry, very much for being with us. Well, it's been my pleasure, and thank you very much. We're back to the live, to the action on the field now, and of course, uh, the core that's coming up next as a spot in almost everyone's heart, and I know uh, for you and me, a special place, the Madison Scouts. What about the Madison Scouts? Well, they're a corps which just overpowers you with their sound. They've got one of the great horn lines, really, and tonight it, they're trying a little strategy. They finished uh, second, but they're the defending champion, so they elected to go uh, in the second to last spot instead of ending up uh, in the final spot. This gives them a chance to show off their audience appeal before uh, we get to the Santa Clara Vanguard. A very interesting sidelight on that is that uh, the Santa Clara has done this to the scouts a couple of times. They did it to them in the 1974 DCI championship and, and won, so we'll see what it does for the scouts tonight. Okay, Mike, let's, let's step back now and watch the Madison scouts.
Those men on the field with those distinctive white caps on and the very flashy black ties are the judges. And we've asked Lloyd Pozzola to come with us uh, just for a moment to explain a little bit what the job is and uh, so that we'll have a better understanding of what we're going to watch right after this. Lloyd, uh, just what exactly are you doing? All right, being primarily a brass judge, or really solely a brass judge, what I was uh, attempting to do tonight is uh, taking a look at all aspects of the show uh, with respect to the brass performance, uh, the musical analysis performance, and the execution performance, and uh, making some comments, uh, general comments, so that the uh, people in the stands might get an idea of just exactly what goes on with the judging aspects inside the horn line as well as outside. Okay, Lloyd, we'll take a listen and uh, see what you have to say. Thanks okay. very much. Thank you. We see Lloyd in action judging the Phantom Regiment, recording his comments as he goes for later evaluation nice by the Corps. We'll be going to the back of the field here. Watch the tongue getting just a little heavy. And the Sopranos, watch extreme upper register also the uh, quality of the considerably. Fine, a controlled accelerando coming in, fine. Again, Mellophone's French horns, watch that extreme upper register, the quality diminishes somewhat. Oh, nice, nice baritone quality coming through here in the double tonguing section. Very consistent execution also. Very nice accelerando, very well controlled. Excellent. and definition coming from middle voices especially. Getting just a little harsh in the uh, overextended in the uh, in the finale climax portion. For another inside look at judging, here is Lloyd commenting on the Cavaliers' concert number. Of that section. Fine exposure sopranos are rhythmically, uh, in the first soprano line especially, a very much uh, exposed in unison uh, rhythmic pattern. However, be careful at initial attack. You can hear uh, the very small nuances and the method of articulation in the attack. Takes a great deal of stamina to keep playing that same repeated phrase and that's just a tour, very good. Fine exposure, fine demands on the horn line. Baritone's having just a little bit of a performance problem here. They're now they're playing extremely tight within that rhythmic pattern. Little, uh, small little nuances are showing through in the uh, inconsistencies in the execution. In the mechanical aspects. Sopranos, on the other hand, are much tighter in their sound. Especially within that uh, sec segment of the horn line. Very well handled this, uh, this Celerando here. I think the crescendo could have been built uh, much higher into the, uh, the height of the crescendo could have been much higher in the uh, triplet pattern moving into this section. Fine climax portion. Good quality up and down. Fine balance. Very good job. Cores such as the Blue Stars use these recorded comments to help perfect their own performances. work here. Nice transition going to the back of the field. All right, a little more subtle uh, expression can be utilized here, although it's very fine. The accenting especially is very good. Ah, there it is. That's the subtle expressions of thing coming through very nicely.
good use of the directional thing so there's not an overbalance. That getting to turn the left hand side. Then I can control that. In that very fast turn, you can have those voices sticking out that are uh, undesirable at that point. Don't really care to hear the end of that phrase. Uh, because of the direction, the direction in which most of the phrase is played and uh, the horn was coming around. The directional sound of the horn came through uh, much, much too harshly. Again, nice directional move to create that impact, to create that contrast and dynamic level. Very nice. Very consistent quality coming through so far. Just small, uh, minor problems occurring, nothing of a really serious nature. Occasionally, cores perform so well, the judges have trouble finding mistakes. Here's Lloyd with the Blue Devils. Emotional impact here with the crescendo building through the gate swings and the, uh, oh, very nice. Excellent, superb coordination to drill and music at this point. Again, with the whole directional thing and the horn facing, the, the diminishment in volume level. Excellent job. Look at the, the tremendous utilization of field that covers here in the, uh, the climax portion, tremendous exposure, tremendous exposure. And then I get into the accelerando and people handling it. With a great deal of professionalism, again into the tempo change again, and another wide, extremely wide formation, very maximum exposure with respect to drill design. Again, the accelerando coming forward. Excellent, just superb. Our thanks to Lloyd Pozzola for those very interesting comments on the cores. Well, we've seen the Madison Scouts. What's your comment? Well, you can see that the Scouts were ready tonight. They were ready to perform, and it was just a terrific show. Uh, Santa Clara is next. They only beat the Scouts this afternoon by 15 hundredths of a point. So we're going to see just a tremendous windup of this contest. Uh, there's no doubt about it. There's going to be no give and take on this one. No, this is, uh, this is just the oh, it's going to be a great uh, windup, no doubt about okay, it. Okay, here comes Santa Clara.
You said the scouts were here to play. Uh, what do you what do you feel now about Santa Clara? Well, you know, what can you really say except, you know, you've seen uh, two or three of the finest cores in the country here. I think Santa Clara always amazes me because here's a core that's only about eight years old, and yet they've risen to the top of the drum corps world in that short amount of time, and they're national champions twice, and, uh, you know, they're making a bid for it again this year. There's no doubt about it. Uh, what we're all waiting for now, of course, is uh, the, the final tallying of scores and uh, the appearance of all of the cores. Uh, is it difficult sitting in the stands or sitting at home even watching on television to try and pick out the winner of this kind of competition? Well, I don't know that I ever do pick out the winner uh, because I go with a reaction of what I like uh, and what I see and uh, it's just my own personal taste. It's very difficult for an audience up there to pick out some of the fine details of what's going on on the field and to know exactly what the judges have seen. Many times they don't see some of the mistakes so it's it's awfully difficult to know what the outcome is going to be when the, the uh, level is as high as it is. You know, I'd assume uh, when they're judging and they're judging in tenths of a point and uh, you know all kinds of varying scoring it, it must be almost impossible to try and guess who is going to come up with a, a tenth of a point less than another, someone else? Well, I don't think we could. I mean, we could sit on the sidelines and maybe see some mistakes, and the judges might not see them at all. Uh, then on the other hand, there might be a judge following around somebody who's just making mistake after mistake that we in the audience don't see. So I just don't think it's... I don't want to predict is what I'm saying, Pete. <laughs> okay, let's wait now until the course get on the field. To top off the evening, the Corps march back on the field. Drum majors are front and center. The tension is thick. Thousands in the stands join the Corps members themselves on the field in hushed anticipation. The tallies are complete, and the moment of truth has arrived. In 10th place, the Pioneers, with a score of 62.30. Ninth place, the Guardsmen, 63.55. Eighth place, Capital Freelancers, 65.55. Seventh place, the Phantom Regiment, 77.10. Sixth place, the Cavaliers, 77.20. Now we go to field announcer Joe Bruno with his announcement of the top five cores. And now from tenth place on, the judging is very close. In fifth place, in penalty, 0 0.2. Score, 8-1. Point four five. The blue side. In fourth place. In penalty. No penalty. Score eight two point five zero. The In third place, third place, in penalty, 0 0.2, score, 83.55, the Blue Devil. In second place, second place, in penalty, no penalty. Score, 85.40. I guess now we know who's best in the Midwest. Yeah, it was really terrific tonight. There's no doubt about it. And yeah. we're seeing uh, such a tremendous rivalry between Santa Clara and 
the scouts, every time they meet, it just makes a terrific contest. Uh, it's one of the great rivalries in the drum corps business right now. Okay, Mike, thank you very much for being with us. We've enjoyed it uh, again, and uh, we want to thank you for all of your comments. Well, it's my pleasure, really. Okay, and thanks again to Lloyd Pasola, who is out on the field and allowed us to eavesdrop on some of his conversations as the chorus per Purdue performed for us. Thank you very much for being with us, and good night.